Right guys, welcome back. Today we've got Davey in from Universal Scuffs. Alright Dave. He's uh, come to do the Volvo because you all told me I should leave it well enough alone. Thanks for that by the way, all of you on Instagram that said I should leave Davey to paint a wing. Presumably because you thought I was going to screw it up. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Davey's scuffing up uh, into the door. He's going to blend into the door here. I've said not to bother blending into the bonnet or the uh, A-pillar there. Um, it's going to go too far otherwise so i think i'm already expecting there's going to be a slight color variation it's a bit unavoidable because we're not blending into those two panels but i think the door would be the most obvious one so davy's agreed to blend into that door for me uh, he's just rectifying my fillering there <laughs> getting that straight but it's actually coming out all right it's actually looking fairly all right that so hopefully yeah we'll get hopefully the volvo get done i know a lot of you like the volvo um, I'm keen to get it out for sale because it is such a lovely car but I have just noticed it's got three quarters of a tank of diesel on it so being a tight ass I am I'm definitely going to drive around in it for a bit um, and then Davey's going to try and hit the Ibiza today as well do the do the corners of that um, the Fiesta that needs pulling now those dents are too deep really for filler so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the living bejesus out of that and market that as is and if it doesn't sell then we'll get Davey back in with a puller and he'll paint that rear quarter for me. But now we've got the MOT work done on it. Uh, all good on that front. I actually have quite a lot of editing to do today. I haven't put any videos out for quite a while. So I'll leave Davey well enough alone and get on get on editing. And also the uh, spare workshop is now pretty clear. So I'll get through and clear that. I'm hoping today also I can pick up the Chevy Spark at some point. Get that in. Potentially get that valeted and up for sale. But I think I've got to get some editing done first. So we'll catch up with Davey in a bit and so he gets on. I'll put a link for Davey down below. Davey, what area do you cover? Um, I cover from Taunton, well, Bridgewater, really down to Torquay. Bridgewater down to Torquay. All oh, right, that's a fair, fair area then. Yeah, big enough. Yeah, nice one. So like I said, you know, with the paint, you've got to decide how comfortable you are doing it. I know um, I encourage you all to give it a go, but you have got to bear in mind the cost of buying sandpaper, fillers, primers, colour, lacquer, by the time you're all in with buying all that stuff, you could be 60, 70 quid into materials. So if you're not going to do it on a regular basis and it is your pride and joy, maybe worth getting someone like Davey around to have a look or get Davey to have a look if you're in a local area. Um, so again, this is not me jibbing out of work, by the way, guys. As I said, you know, that's a really, really nice car. It's quite a large area to paint. So Davey's going to be doing a better job with a compressor and a gun than I am with my rattle cans. I do obviously try and keep the rattle can stuff down to minimum. You saw me do the high-end i10 myself, so I am still getting my hands dirty, guys. I'm not just sitting in that Valencia chair. <laughs> Valencia chair. Um, yeah, keeping plenty busy. But like I say, there will be a bit of paperwork and a bit of editing, and then we'll catch up with uh, Dave and see how he's gone. Well, we're all lacquered up, guys. And the heat lamps are on it. It's looking good. Colour match is looking good. A little bit of light, looks dark here because the lights coming down like that but i won't faff around too much with it i'll leave davy to it and we'll wait until he's unmasked it and all that um for final reveal it looks like the volvo is finally getting done i'm hoping when it goes in for mot that it's not going to need a lot it seems to be a really good car but i guess i could get a bit of a surprise i still want to get underneath and fit the new washer for the headlight washers but now he's cracking on with the uh with the corner of the bumper for me on the uh, little ibiza here Excuse the wind guys, but a quick sneak peek for those of you watching on Instagram before YouTube. Davey did a cracking job on the Volvo. Look at that guys. That's where we did the bumper repair and when we put that wing on. This is gonna come out really, really nicely. Hi guys, welcome back to Chops Garage. Uh, what have we got on today then? We are trying to sort the wing mirror, broken wing mirror and broken door handle on the Seat Ibiza. Got a new door handle coming because this one's broken so i've got to wait on that put the new wing mirror on it wants to turn all the way around it's not stopping where it should so i've unplugged it disconnected the battery and i'll plug it back in and see if that helps with it learn its position i don't know if it's just a long shot i don't know what the other solution will be for it it'll just keep on going all the way around otherwise the other one works fine this one just keeps going all the way around don't know why um bit of a rush on with it because the lady wants to come in to say on Saturday today's Thursday and the seats are pretty grim so we're gonna get the G101 on there soft nail brush work it all up get the bizzle cleaner in 
get the bezel to suck it out and then probably give it another go get the heat, la heat lamp on it dry it off um if i haven't updated you already the little skoda fabia the bronze one with the lacquer peel the sold as it was 1500 quid it's about a 200 pound margin in it for me i sold it as is without a warranty um obviously it still falls under the consumer rights act uh, but he has a number of test drives in it i've driven it a lot the coil pack moors absolute stars as always more stuck a coil pack in it and a new spark plug charged me what 30 quid something like that and uh, including diagnosis and it ran ran like a champ and i messaged the lad last night check he got home he went quite a distance for it check he got um home okay and he said he got home fine they were just struggling to get a car in the current market that wasn't donkey's age old with stupid miles on um yeah for the kind of money he had he only had like 1500 quid so yeah really really nice lad he's, he's studying engineering uh, so he's, you know we had a good long chat he's prepared to get his hands dirty on it that kind of thing and you know they seem fair enough people they understood the score with it so yeah so that's moved on obviously the focus sold didn't it the problematic part change focus sold to another trader who again we were personally honest you know with him as to what the issues were with that one and he's happy that he can go away and fix it within the price point i gave it to him i uh, sold it to him for 750 quid so 150 quid more than i parked it for so again all these little bits add up here and there um yeah loads of calls yesterday i mean loads of calls, i guess four calls yesterday on people that have been recommended by various people wanting cars all around the 3k mark three to 4k mark with low uh, road tax uh, decent energy the lady that wants to see this wanted a slightly bigger engine so that's ideal 1.4 she wasn't so obsessed with the road tax uh the newer stuff again no real inquiries on the newer stuff i know by my standards i probably am jumping the gun a little bit that's been up for what a week the uh, the uh fever also viva has been up for a week this has been up for a couple of days but i have had inquiries on that so that'll probably be okay still no inquiries on the the little uh, 108, which I think is coming on a month now. That might be a month that's been advertised, which is a long, long time with me. The Fiesta, got to get it validated, get it up for sale as is. They're all covered in sheeting from when Davey came and painted, and I haven't got around to taking it off yet. That's the reason for that, and no one's coming by, so it doesn't, I don't have to worry about how it looks. And then obviously next door, we've still got the Volvo to bring in. Get the Volvo cleaned up, get that photograph. So I need to get a new windscreen in it because it's got a crack on it. It wouldn't fail an MOT, but it'll need to be done before it's sold. But first thing is, is get the wet stuff done so that that can, um, that can dry off, have the longest time to dry off. First things first, we'll hit up the driver's seat. You can see on the camera better than I can in real life. The dirt. So we're going to just douse it with G101. Let it sit in there for a bit. And then we're going to use the brush on the drill to sort of free this dirt up. Uh, I don't mind using the brush on the drill on this fabric because it's not going to be massively sensitive to it. My side as well. Obviously, ideally you don't get the seats this wet, but these are pretty grimy. I'm going to need quite a lot of Geo 101 to break down whatever the grime is in them. And then, if you haven't seen these before, brush on the end of a drill free up the dirt this one's a well worn in one so the bristles are quite soft i wouldn't use this on anything with any kind of suede or anything like that on it you'll be asking for trouble so we just i'll just quickly show you what we do with it my drill's playing up well let's put paid to that <laughs> i think my drill's, drill's broken it's been playing up for a while now i need to get a new one but basically, yeah, I'll have to, if, with that failing, I'll use a soft brush, work it in. I might need to find it. I've got a couple of other stiffer brushes as well, if needs be. But those brushes on the drill are really, really good for freeing up the dirt. Now, what I've done now is obviously the dirt is now sort of sitting there on top. I need to get a, a microfiber cloth and lift as much of that dirt out as I can. You can see it's already looking 100 times better, but obviously um, when it dries out, there's some of that dirt will settle back down again, so I want to lift it out again with a microfiber now.
So you see there, what I'm basically doing is using the bezel to suck back out the, the uh, G101 with the dirt in it. So I'll put some more on, give it another scrub down, do the same again. I don't think you need to see me do that over and over again, but that's the basic process. And then when it's dried off, we'll have another look at it. Obviously, this is what you guys recommended for me to get, which I have to say is very useful. I say I just wish the hose was a little bit longer on it. Um, but yeah, it is a useful little tool for getting the damp out. You don't want to leave the wet sitting in the seat because it'll mould up and take forever to dry. So good little tool for getting it out. Anyway, we'll crack on and get the rest of the seats done and then when they're dried off, we'll have a look. There we go, all done. A million times better. Many of the seats needed going over multiple times. But overall looking very good. Surprisingly, it's weird because the like carpets and that are all really clean and there's very little dirt in the car. It all just seems to be in the fabric of the seats. What was coming out looked like tar, to be honest. So it could be that it was owned by a smoker. And um, that's what sort of the tar settled on the seats or something. I don't know. It was surprising, like I say, how clean the carpets are and how little dirt there is to hoover out the footwells and so forth. Or how much crud there was on the seats. This is what we pulled out of it. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Nasty, nasty, nasty. So yeah, good look tool. Thanks for the tips for getting that, guys. Right, so we'll crack on, hoover it out now, do the plastics, uh, detail the engine bay, clean the boot out, then the outside will get a machine polish, wheels will get detailed, all we'll waiting for the door handle to come in, then I'll give it a service and it'll be ready for sale. So I'll try and talk over the horrendous weather here. Got the Chevy back from the guys at Moores who did do the gearbox for me in the end. I know David's gonna kick my butt below, but I was so busy. And like I say, it was about a hundred pound difference between getting them doing it, me buying an alignment tool, the fluids, getting Scott in, giving him 50 quid to help me out for the day and then potentially mucking it up, all that kind of stuff. So it's all back, it's all done. Um, advisory free MOT now. It had a problem with the fuel cap which was fixed. Um, but the same day I brought it back, a lady came by wanting to see the i10. She'd missed the i10, that had already gone, obviously that sold straight away. She loved the look of this, she'd had a Matiz before, so she knew the car as well. Um, she had to go away and sort out finance, which is slightly worrying, obviously in a three grand car, because obviously that means she's maxed out on her budget. If there's any problems with it, she's got no contingency fund. But, you know, three grand isn't an inconsiderable amount of money. Um, anyway, she's gone away and sorted that out. She's rang me up this morning, she's put a deposit down on it. So that's already sold as well. I just need to get it in, service it, valet it. And then um, I want to do something about the boot here. When you lift the boot, it's not open now, but along this edge here with these cars, when they sprayed them, I think they must have sprayed them with the boot lids on because they don't get any paint in along here, the back there, and it starts to get a bit crusty. So I'm gonna tidy that up as well. I'll go through, like I say, give it a really good fallet and um, do the service on it. But yeah, as always, as soon as stuff's getting ready, it's selling. It's, uh, it's a nice thing, but it just means I don't really build up any major stock level. Uh, and like I say, I've got to still get this one done. But hopefully we get the Volvo in tomorrow as well. But this camera's all mucky now. Anyway, I thought I'd give you a quick update that the Chevy Spark... Oh, uh, 2895 for the Chevy. 2895. So uh, I did up the asking price for it. But it has just had a new clutch in it. I'm sure you can go and buy one for... Sorry, about two and a half. But then you won't have a new clutch in it, will you? So, and you won't have a warranty and all that kind of stuff. So Chevy cleaned up nice as I knew it would. It was, it's in really good condition. I'm just going around being a little bit picky and putting in a key tart and a few things up. I've stone, touched in some stone chips because the Hyundai metallic blue is almost identical. Touching some touch in stone chips. There's a bit of flaky paint on here on the silver rails and just using some general silver just to tidy that up a little bit. A few stone chips around the fuel filler cap. Um, that wasn't working so I had to bond in the uh, little plunger and I've just painted the actual bit of um, the uh, putty that I used, the hard putty I used to bond that in place. I've painted that the body color so that it's tidier. Up here, underneath here, in the gap here, where they don't really paint them much on these, they must have sprayed this in situ with the, these on. You can get a bit of service, so I've put some um, converter on there just to tidy that up. Just going around looking for any stone chippy stuff. And I've got the service kit here ready to go, so I'll get the service done and uh, give it a bit of a polish. I think it should come up very tidy then. Baby little oil filter, isn't it? That's draining away while it's draining off. I'll obviously le level the car off, make sure it's completely empty, we'll change the air filter out. Nice and clean, ties in with the service history. So you love it when they use clips, just so you can ping the clips off and change the air filter, not get stuff out and unbolt it and fiddle around with loads of other stuff. 
So there's a fresh one. So yeah, it's not massively dirty. Fresh oil in. Quick bit of a detail now, just to spray with the plastic. It's the actually interior trim cleaner that I just use on this, just to, I'm gonna try and track down one of these pipes where the gaffer tape around that air intake. I did tell the lady about that. I'm gonna try and track, track one down for her, tidy up the engine bay a bit there. It's not affecting the performance of the vehicle at all, but um, it'd be nice just to have a proper one there. So yeah, just give it, after having jet washed it, just give it a quick blast over with the interior trim shine just to make it look all nice. And now I can close the engine bay down and then my job's done. I've topped up the uh, topped up the washer fluid, checked the power steering fluid, the coolant levels. Um, so obviously we've done the air filter and oil filter now. We can stamp the book with another service. I say a lot of dealers won't do this, I guess because they've got to pay third party. It's cost me about 30 pound in parts, but I can stamp the book now, keep the service history up on this. And the lady hasn't got to get under the bonnet again, hopefully, for another another year. And with the clutch done as well, uh, clutching gearbox done, that, I mean, that's got to be good for another, one would hope, at least 60,000 miles, wouldn't you? So, yeah, being chain-driven, no cam belts, of course, to worry about. So just uh, on to the interior. Right guys, so Mrs. Chops is about to pick me up. We're gonna go and pick up a subscriber's car. It's something completely different for this channel. Never had a car like this before on the channel. Something completely new. Could be a big mistake. So come along, let's have a look at it.